today we're talking all about TV series. I was just actually thinking about this yesterday. I'm rewatching Dragon Ball Z in Katan, Bola de Drag Zeta. Bola de Drag Zeta. Sometimes there's like really nice lines in it, and I like to repeat it and, and kind of like play around with it. Like uh, there's one, for example, now it's in the, the part with, with Boo. So he says like, Ten champare. And so it's like really nice to repeat some of these epic lines from Dragon Ball. So I thought that, you know, it's perfect that today we're doing a podcast talking all about, you're really like the master, I think, of uh, referring to lines that you still remember from when, back in the day when you were maybe more of an intermediate learner, right? With different series, Two and a Half Men, for example. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm really excited today to be able to pick your brain and learn some of your some of your secrets. Nice expression, by the way. What does that mean, to pick someone's brain? To pick someone's brain, it means you want to talk to them and learn the knowledge that they have. So anytime, I guess, someone that has more of a, more knowledge and a skill that you don't have, you know, maybe you have a friend who is really in shape, like they're really strong and you want to pick their brain about what are the things that they, what kind of diet do they have? What are the different routines that they do at the gym and so on. And of course, Thiago being an incredible English learner, no one better to pick their brain on how, how, how did you do it? And we've done a few of these lessons, right? Uh, people should definitely check out the, actually the first lesson that you ever did on the Real Life English YouTube channel, where you talked about your whole journey. But today we're kind of zooming in because we had a lot of requests of people asking, uh, you know, use TV series, right, to learn English. So people were asking, Chiago, how did you do that? I thought though, even before we get into talking about the specific method, maybe you could just share a bit about what was the the mindset that helped you to be successful doing this? Because I think a lot of where a lot of learners tend to sort of fall down, where they tend to uh, fail is because they're just getting frustrated with themselves. You know, they're watching a TV series, maybe they try to take off the subtitles, they, they get completely lost, mm-hmm. and so they just give up. And yeah. that obviously isn't what happened to you, right? When it comes to using movies and TV series to improve my English, I always had the mindset mm-hmm. of uh, consistency and quality rather than quantity, meaning that Mm -hmm. I would focus on just uh, watching sometimes a a 20-minute episode of a sitcom or even a 5- or 10-minute clip. Uh, So it was small bits, but I did that frequently. Uh, I tried Mm -hmm. to do it daily back then. And also the Mm -hmm. mindset was every time I sat down to deliberately work with a movie or TV show clip... My mindset was, I got to learn, I got to extract at least one thing from this. I got to learn one thing at least, you know, a a new word or a new way or how to pronounce something that I didn't know how to pronounce before or a new way of saying something in Mm -hmm. this or that situation. I got to extract something. So that was my mindset, always extracting at least one thing from that clip Mm -hmm. that I was working with and uh, being realistic. That's why it's important for you to be consistent because... It's better for you to do it every day and just focus on one thing that you learn per day than maybe trying to memorize 10 words uh, in one sitting or 20 words in one Mm -hmm. sitting. That's not realistic and you're just setting yourself up for disappointment. Yeah. Yeah. You said an interesting word there. Your goal was to extract at least one new thing, one new piece of information. What does it mean to extract something? To get out from, to, Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like a takeaway, I like to call it, too. Uh, You watch something and then you go, what is the takeaway from this? What do I take with me in my life, Mm -hmm. in my English? What do I take? Yeah. What do I uh, extract or get from, you know? Exactly. Well, we have a lot of takeaways for listeners today. And uh, I love what you were saying just about setting the bar really low for yourself. That's something we've talked about a lot before, right? Is not trying to be like, oh, I need to learn 10 new words from the series I'm watching. It's like, lower the bar, you know, at first, like learn one new word, two new words, or just focus on learning an interesting way that they pronounce something, some connected speech or something along those lines. And the other reason we're talking about series too is because, as you said, it's something that you could do every day. It's fun, natural, convenient, as we say in the real life way, our method for learning English. It's something that's fun, natural, convenient, and that you can do every single day. So if you're able to find things like this, things that you're really passionate about it just makes the journey so much easier than if you're if your goal is to study out of a book out of a grammar book maybe if you really love grammar then that's that can work great for you but for a lot of people 
that's the first thing they go to, right? Because it's, it's what they did back in school and they might fall down because it doesn't have for them that aspect of being fun, natural, and convenient. So I'm really curious to hear about the actual steps of this method. But first I want to let learners know that if they're looking for a way to make their English more fun, natural, and convenient, you should definitely check out the Real Life English app because you know with this podcast, uh, you can listen to the full episodes with a interactive transcript and we pick out you know the most difficult vocabulary for you we use vocabulary memorization software that you can you know use every single day so that you never forget the new words that you're learning and it really makes the things you can extract out of this podcast you can extract so much more get so many more takeaways than you are by just watching the video or just listening on a normal podcast player so highly recommend you check that out we'll link it in the description of the podcast episode or in the description on youtube and so Let's go for it, Thiago. Let it let us All right. let us in on your big secrets about. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is my personal method for working with movies and TV series, and while it is simple, I found it quite effective. It's a series mm -hmm. of steps, and uh, let me introduce step one. First of all, have an idea already of what the context is, what the situation is about, and you can do that in one line, just a one line sentence to tell yourself what that clip is about. Just to give an example, you start watching it and then you, you tell yourself or you realize that, okay, in this clip, a lawyer is defending three young people who did something wrong. You see, it's a one line sentence that describes the situation, that contextualizes it already, sets the scene. Mm -hmm. Or in this clip, uh, there are six friends at a coffee shop talking about <laughs> their job. I you wonder know? what series that could be. <laughs> what could that be? <laughs> so yeah, that's important to do. So you can do that as you watch the clip. Yeah, for me nowadays, it's, it kind of happens even intuitively. I don't even think about it anymore, but I kind of, I know mm -hmm. what the situation is. But if you are new at this, maybe you can even watch the clip first, you know, a mm -hmm. 15 or 30 second clip and then stop and then tell mm -hmm. yourself, okay, what is the one liner here? What is this about? Yeah. Why is that important? Because it's important that you understand the situation first from the get go, because if you don't, you tend to panic more. I, I find that learners sometimes they they tend to focus right away on the language that is actually being shown to them in the subtitles, on the words. And the minute they see something that they don't, they don't understand, they start panicking and then, oh, my God, no, I don't understand anything. Uh, this is not for me. So first, you want to watch the scene from above, as I like to call it. Like uh, you are w looking at a forest to see the big picture first. Okay, what is this about? I think that makes perfect sense. And even, it might not always be that it's really obvious, like in a courtroom or even in a coffee shop or something, but there's a lot of other cues too that you can look for to try to get that context. Like maybe if you watch it first, it's really fast and you couldn't pick up any anything at all, let's say, but there's a lot of environmental cues so you can pay attention to the the characters in the scenes faces you know are they are they angry are they happy are they excited are they sad you know what's kind of going on there or you could look around the environment the surroundings and stuff like where are they are they in a big city are they in a small town are they in a farm are they up in space and so on and i think all these little things can help you to already gather a lot of information that even just taking, it's probably like a two second thing you can even, once you get used to doing it, right? It could even just take a couple seconds and then you're already a lot more prepared to, you've got the context, so then you can understand the details a lot better when you actually get into trying to better understand the language that's being used there. So how about step two? Let's keep it going. Oh yeah, let's keep it going. So step two for me <laughs> <laughs> would be actually learning the pronunciation first, focusing, focusing on the sounds first. It's important that when you watch a short clip, you deliberately select maybe some words that you want to focus on or even some sentences that you want to focus on. It could be words that you don't know and you're going to have to check the meaning later, or it could be things that you know already, but you just want to practice. Let's say you see a nice phrase and you want to focus on that phrase, on that sentence. Focus on the sound first. So play back a little bit, you know, uh, listen, repeat, play that line a couple of times, repeat with this, with the series or with the movie, with the clip, because I know it's important that you get your mouth around it first. Yeah. Because it's one thing for you to read the sentence to yourself, you know, like silently in your mind. It's another thing when you actually have to speak it out loud, you know, so get your mouth around the word or the phrase first, 
physically practice articulating those sounds and making those sounds with your face, with your mouth, to know how it feels also. How does it feel when I repeat, repeat it like that and trying to copy the way you hear it? Imagine you are watching a clip and you see the question, what is going on here? What is going on here? But you realize that the actor is frustrated and he goes, what is going on here? Imitate that, not just the sound, but the feeling, you know? Imagine you are the act, what is going on here, you know? So get your mouth around it first, the feel of uh, the word or the phrase we're focusing on. And even if it's really difficult for you, like there's, maybe there's a lot of THs in there or a lot of schwa sounds or, you know, choose your flavor of uh, pronunciation in English that's hard for you because it doesn't exist in your native language. There's a lot of those, so you, you even have trouble articulating them. You could even start out by humming it, for example. So uh, Chiago gave the example, right, of what is going on here? You could just try humming that, like, hmm, 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 like really capturing that music of the language because how exactly you might articulate that same phrase in your native language in a frustrated way, the, the emphasis might fall on different parts of the phrase, right? So if you can even just start listening when you're listening to a podcast or you're watching a TV series, just kind of humming along with that, kind of capturing the musicality of it, you're going to tune your ear to how those sounds are produced in English. And even that's going to help a lot, even before getting into the technicalities of the pronunciation of individual sounds. So that's something I recommend that uh, people give a go. And I also really liked what you were saying because it just reminded me of this clip I just saw of Ana de Armas, who's from, she's a uh, Oscar nominated actress from Cuba. And she was talking about, it, it was on Saturday Night Live and she's talking about basically how she got into acting. She, she was living in the States. She said she actually learned English with friends, which I thought was, was amazing. I was born in Cuba, came to America when I, was, when I was 26, and I learned English the way everyone who comes to this country does, by watching Friends. <laughs> and she was taking some classes about acting in the United States, and they're practicing lines, and one of the lines she had to say that she'd never heard before is, I beg your pardon. And so she said that what got her into trouble is she was looking at the individual words in that phrase and she's like, oh, okay, so it's something, I'm begging for something. I'm begging for pardon. Like literally, can you please, 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 please. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean that as a phrase, right? So she went into the act the scene. She's like, I beg your pardon, <laughs> which wasn't at all how it's supposed to be said. <laughs> and there was this line, I beg your pardon. But I had never seen or heard that phrase. So I thought this character was literally begging. So when I did the line, I said, I beg your pardon, give it to me. So uh, it's kind of like sometimes paying attention to the individual words can get you into trouble, right? You'll understand the wrong thing. And in case people don't know, I beg your pardon just means that you didn't understand something. So it should just be said like, I beg your pardon? Uh-huh. With that tone of question, right? Like, mm. Exactly. Could you say that again? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, you can see, I mean, just like saying that in two different ways, it gives like a very different sort of, a very yeah. d different sort of meaning to it. All right. How about step number three? The third step would actually be the vocabulary. So that's the part when you actually focus on the words you want to learn from that clip. So if you don't know a word, you know, you can take notes and you can choose, you can choose to look up the meaning right away. As you are watching it, you stop to check it, or you can maybe just uh, take notes to check it later. Yeah. In my case, I, I preferred to do it while I was watching because it was a study time for me. You know, it was study time. So I was doing that already. Yeah. But maybe uh, you are watching something not for studying per se, you are just having fun. And then you see a nice word that you find interesting. You don't have to stop to check then, just take notes and then you can check it later. But if you are applying this method now that we are explaining, with the intent of studying, I would recommend actually, you know, looking up the word then, yeah? Uh, because, you know, you are studying with it, with the clip. Uh, and I would say also, just focus on checking the words that catch your attention the most. Don't obsess over understanding every single word of the scene, yeah? Otherwise, it's just too overwhelming for you. So focus on the ones that you like, that you find interesting, maybe two or three here, and that's enough. Yeah, I, I would have to take the other side there, though. I At least for myself, I prefer when I'm watching something, 
it, it obviously it depends to what level you have in the language, but I prefer when I'm watching something to watch it and to, to enjoy it, but to have, you know, maybe a, a notepad on my phone or a piece of paper handy for people who prefer old fashioned and note down the words and then have a separate study time where I, you know, look up these words, I learn the definitions of them, and then I would put them in a spaced repetition software, which is one of the things we have on the Real Life app. But if you're not using that, then you can use a tool like Anki was one I used to use. Or if you're on iPhone, the for some reason, Anki app is very expensive. So you might use like Memrise or Flashcards Deluxe or another app like this. But uh, that the spaced repetition software is what helps you to uh, never forget these new words that you're learning. So that can be a really life-saving tool. And that combination of first watching, kind of enjoying and stuff, and then later for me having my more official study time was something that worked really well for me. So I think for each person, they have to see what level they're at. And you know, maybe you're at a level where you can't actually sit and enjoy the scene without looking up some of those words, right? Yeah, that is an approach that definitely works also. Uh, I tend to recommend looking up the meaning of the words as you are watching the clip though, because uh, many words in English, they have multiple meanings. And sometimes if you leave it to check it later, you might forget the context in which you saw that word. And then you might just roll with the first meaning you check. You know, uh, the cool thing about doing it as you are watching it is that, you know, you can see exactly the meaning that applies to that scene. Because that happened to me sometimes, you know, I was watching something, then I stopped and then I checked the meaning of the word. And then I saw that the first meaning the dictionary gave me didn't really match with what was happening in the scene. And then I kept reading the definitions, and then the third meaning actually was the one that was more related to this. And, ah, okay, so this word has this other usage as well, you know, so because of that. But, you know, provided that you don't forget the context in which you saw, maybe you can even take notes on a notepad or iPhone or phone uh, of the situation. You have to check later. It's fine. Yeah, like, oh, uh, this word here I want to check later, and the situation was this guy was eating something at the restaurant. Yeah, I would even write down when I was, you know, studying more, more serious, more seriously, mm -hmm. uh, I would write down even the whole phrase and I would put that in the space ah, repetition software because then it, at least for me, it was like a trigger, right? That mm -hmm. I could attach this word to what was happening in that scene. And then anytime I need to recall this word, I would just think of that series, that scene, and it would, it would come back to me. And with what you're saying too, another great example of that is if it's an expression or collocation, like what I was saying before with beg your pardon. Or before when I was disagreeing with you, I could have also said, I beg to differ, which is an expression that means I, I have a different opinion than you mm -hmm. do, right? Mm -hmm. So if you just see that and you know the word beg already, and you see, I beg to differ, you might you know, not understand that unless you are actually uh, aware of that entire expression, right? You might be mm -hmm. like, I beg, I beg to differ? Like, what does, what does that mean? You know, just a parenthesis there, I got to mention something about this, because, you know, imagine, I, I, I don't know that expression that you just used. I beg to differ. My first mm -hmm. instinct would be, okay, maybe focusing on the, on the individual words, beg. All right, I know beg. Great. Differ, I don't know the meaning. Let me check. And then I check the meaning mm -hmm. of differ. But then putting it together, I was like, that doesn't make sense. Beg, <laughs> differ. So that, for me, would work as a clue as a hint that, oh, mm -hmm. this is probably an expression, you know? Yeah. So when you try to put the, the words together like that and it doesn't make sense, very likely it's an idiom or an expression. And then it's very simple mm -hmm. nowadays. You can just go to Google, beg or pardon meaning. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You type it, type it in like that, beg or pardon meaning. And then you have that affiliation. Oh, yeah, it's an expression. Okay. <laughs> Or just have so. ChatGPT open while you're watching. Exactly. <laughs> your <laughs> ChatGPT. Yeah. I think we only have a couple more steps, right? What's step four? Yeah. Uh, the next step would be uh, analyzing the context more deeply. Remember, the first step was already looking at the context. What is the situation in the clip? Now you are even more deliberate with that. Like, really analyze the mm -hmm. context, the situation, that word or that expression you're focusing on is being used. So... You can ask yourself some questions like, what's happening here? Who's talking? Who speaks this phrase? Uh, how are the people feeling? Why does this character say this phrase to that character? Yeah, so you, you spend some time, yeah, uh, just thinking about that. Like, you know, uh, understanding why that word or that phrase was used in that situation. This is really interesting. It made me think of, uh, actually, imagine you're watching Friends and the character Chandler, he's 
well, a lot of them make jokes, but especially Chandler is always joking, right? Always being very sarcastic. So, you know, in that, that case, for example, that might be a place where you really have to use your skills of deduction to figure out because the literal meaning isn't going to make sense. And usually it's like play on words, right? So you need to know, for example, two meanings of the same word and kind of like figure out what was the humor there. And actually these old series, so people criticize those laugh tracks, but if you're learning the language, those can be helpful because if they're laughing a lot and you don't know what was funny, then it's like, okay, there's something there I missed. Like, let me pull this apart a little mm -hmm. bit. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I like what you said about uh, Chandler. You know, he's a sarcastic mm -hmm. character. So it's also important to focus on that uh, when analyzing the context. Ideally, you are watching a movie or TV show that you like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That you, you know, maybe you have already seen it, but now you are using it to study English. So you probably know the characters. So think, so think about that. Oh, is this character usually more serious or more, I don't know, flamboyant or more sarcastic oh. like Chandler? Yeah. What does flamboyant mean? I like to maybe extravagant, like extravagant, extravagant yeah, like full of colors big, and expensive. A big personality, right? Can you say that again? It's a big personality, right? A big personality, yeah, extravagant, yeah. All right, and what's the last step? If I'm not mistaken, step five is the final step. And the last step is about contextualizing it and making it relevant for yourself. In my case, I always like to imagine a real situation that could happen in my life that would allow me to use that word or phrase I'm learning with the clip. So just play with your imagination. Like, oh, imagine I'm going to the mall and then I meet this person there and then I can say this phrase to that person. Or mm -hmm. I am working and then I, I don't know how to do something. I can ask my coworker using this phrase. And also uh, creating different scenarios that could potentially happen in your life mm -hmm. for you to use uh, the new language you are learning. I believe I heard you mention too, even imagining different situations that you could use it. So I don't know, let's go back to, I beg your pardon, for example, that you could say it in a rather neutral way, right? Like if you didn't understand something, you could say, oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, but you could also say it like if someone said something that you found maybe offensive or you found shocking, you know, you could say, I beg your pardon. And like kind of playing with these different, these different emotions, right? These different ways that you can use it and everything that helps you to, to gain more of an advanced use of, of the expression or the word or, or so on, right? Yeah, exactly. This is very powerful because uh, why do we learn languages? To communicate. And when we communicate, we want to communicate our feelings. And we humans, we have many feelings. So you can actually ask yourself, uh, how would I say this phrase if I were frustrated? How would I say mm -hmm. this phrase if I were angry or if I were tired or if I were extremely happy over the moon? So yeah, Ooh. playing with different emotions is also a way of making it more concrete for yourself. All right. So people are probably listening to this. There were like five steps there, right? It sounds, maybe it sounds like a lot to some people. So do you have to spend like an hour every day doing this? No, no. I mean, the beautiful thing about this is that it's super simple and you can do it with one hour if you have the time or just five minutes. It sounds like a lot now that we are explaining it, but actually the practicality of it, uh, the way you apply it is actually quite quick. Things happen quite quickly. All these steps, they kind of happen sometimes even simultaneously as we're watching a clip. We are just breaking it down here, dissecting it for you guys. But this is something you can do for five minutes or one hour, really. Amazing. So, Thiago, I think we all want to see you put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> what does that mean, by the way? Oh yeah. So if you put your money where your mouth is, that's basically if someone is telling you, oh, I can do this amazing thing, then you might say, oh yeah, like put your money where your mouth is. Show me, show me mm -hmm. that you can do that thing. So okay. now I think everyone's itching for you to put your money where your mouth is <laughs> <laughs> to actually show us, you know, in practice, how does this work? How does this, this method work? So we have today a clip from Wednesday, which is I think, uh, you know, one of the most popular series that's come out so far in 2023. So we thought it would be a good one to use. And it has like pretty good uh, standard American English, right? It does. Yeah. You recently did another lesson. It's actually one of our most popular lessons on Learning Show TV series. So if people are a fan of the show and they want a full lesson with that, then you can check that out in the description uh, of this podcast or in the description on YouTube. Uh, do you want to give some context for the first clip or should we just mm -hmm. roll it? 
Yeah, I just want to say that, you know, I'm going to approach the clip now, uh, imagining that uh, I'm learning, actually, you know, I, just like I, I used to do in the past. Yeah. So imagining that maybe I, I wouldn't understand some things. What would I do? Yeah. So this is what I would do if I had this clip here now in front of me. Yeah. So maybe uh, we can watch the clip first. Yeah. And even for the listeners, I can give the context later because, you know, remember, one of the steps is analyzing the context. Right. So uh, mm -hmm. don't worry, guys, you, you will know what it is, what it is about. <laughs> you should know I'm waiting for someone. Oh, yeah. Who's the lucky guy or girl? What does it matter to you? Didn't mean to interrupt. You're not. OK, cool. So here in the situation, we can see a boy. And Wednesday, the main character, the female protagonist. And uh, there seems to be a little tension between them. Because, you know, uh, if you know the show, the show is about teenagers or pre-teenagers, you know, going to a special school for kids who have powers uh, and who are considered outcasts. Yeah. So, you know, mm -hmm. there seems love interests. That's a common theme in this kind of series. So there seems to be mm -hmm. some tension between this first boy that spoke and Wednesday. And uh, that's why she says, what does it matter to you? Because, you know, he's uh, actually asking her, oh, who is the lucky person who, uh, that you're waiting for? Yeah. Who's mm -hmm. the lucky guy or girl? And oh, what does it matter to you? So I can understand that this question that she asks, she doesn't want to answer him. Mm -hmm. She maybe thinks that he's being invasive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the pronunciation here is interesting. Um, I would actually listen to that clip again and focus on that question. But just to make it short here, imagine after a couple of times, I would get it down. Like, what does it matter to you? What does it matter to you? Uh, Ethan, could you explain the connected speech in this question? What does it matter to you? So we have what there has a glottal T at the end. So it's like what? Uh, 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 uh as if you're cutting it off at the back of your throat. And then we have, what does, what does, we have a flap D there, right? The, 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 what is it? And then the does also links to it. What is it? Uh, another glottal T at the end of it, right? What does it matter? Matter, we have an American T that matter, matter. So it's not matter, it's matter mm -hmm. to you, right? What does it matter to you? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, uh, I wouldn't have to check this question because, you know, looking at the context, I understand that she doesn't want to answer him. So I, now I can go to step five already. I can imagine myself using that phrase in real situations. Imagine somebody asks me about how much money I make. You know, hey, how much is your salary? I could say, hey, what does it matter to you? What does it matter mm -hmm. to you? Why do you want to know? Yeah. So this is one example. I beg your pardon? A beggar pardon? <laughs> With a second tone, right? Like, what? <laughs> Excuse me? And then the second phrase that I found interesting in this clip is, uh, didn't mean to interrupt, because there is this first boy, there is Wednesday, and then this third boy comes in. Yeah, the, the, the boy who Wednesday was waiting for. And then mm -hmm. he says, didn't mean to interrupt. So looking at the context, you can understand that he walked in the situation, and it felt like he was interrupting the conversation or interaction that the first boy was having with Wednesday. That's why he says, mm -hmm. oh, didn't mean to interrupt. So mm -hmm. sometimes looking just at the context is already enough for you to understand what the phrase is. And mm -hmm. uh, this phrase here is also spoken with some very nice connected speech, right, Ethan? And I, I was going to comment on there, too, that... You could pay attention, even if you didn't understand the individual words, the phrases there and everything that we explained, you could still, by just paying attention to the emotions, like Wednesday's being rather off-putting. She's, she's obviously not too happy talking to him. And then the, the first guy is more curious, right? So you can see like he's maybe interested in her. He has some romantic interest or at least some, some sort of fascination with her. So I think you can already see the, the different dynamics here, even if you didn't understand, you know, what is it to you? Uh, so the, the second phrase, what was it again? Didn't mean to interrupt. How would you, uh, break it down the sounds? So we have a nice one there with didn't. Anytime we have a contraction that NT again, we, we tend to cut off the T sound. So it's like didn't, can't, couldn't, wouldn't, shouldn't, and so on. So didn't mean, and I, I, what I heard there, I heard an American T on two and it got reduced to a schwa. 
So didn't mean to, didn't mean to interrupt uh, and interrupt as well. That's a word with an NT and it's in the middle of a word, the middle of a, of a syllable. So in that case, we drop the T altogether. So it's inner, inner. It almost sounds like a double N. Like uh, other words like this could be internet, international. So didn't mean to interrupt. Awesome. So now let's imagine a real situation. Imagine you walk in, some people are having a conversation there. When you enter the place, they kind of stop talking when they look at you. You can say, oh, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt or didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> so if you enjoy learning with TV series like this, then I just got to tell you, we have a course where we help you to really take your English to the next level doing this. We use the first two seasons of Friends. The reason we use this series is because there's various academic studies that have shown that this is the best TV series out there to learn English. And this is just because of the type of English they use uh, has really actually influenced the American English language and even now other accents. Uh, furthermore, we do exactly like Chiago and I are doing here for full episodes. So you can just imagine, you can learn so much by doing this with a full episode. You have transcripts for every single episode, um, the space repetition software, like I was talking about earlier, so that you never forget the new words that you're learning and so much more. So I highly recommend that you check it out. We'll link it down in the description. All right, Chiago, so we have another clip for them, don't we? We do, yeah, we do uh, have another one. Let's give it a go. You want a coffee? It's one of the many perks of this wonderful assignment. I'm actually here for Tyler. I told you he was bad news. Twice. But who I speak to is my business. All right, so first of all, where are they? They are at a coffee shop. So that's important piece of information for you to keep in mind. They are at a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. What caught my attention first was how he asks her if she wants coffee. He goes, you want a coffee? You want a coffee? Like very quickly. You want a coffee? And that's cool because you, know, you can work with movies and series like this too. Uh, not necessarily to learn complex vocabulary, but uh, maybe different ways to, to say something. Maybe your default question in that case would be, do you want coffee? Or would you like coffee? That's okay. But you see, he goes, you want to? You want to? You want a coffee? You want a coffee? Huh. So... I can do the same, yeah? If I'm talking to a friend and uh, I have some coffee with me, some extra coffee, hey, do you want a coffee? Or you want a coffee? I can do the same. Yeah, so that was something that caught my attention there. Uh, it sounds very natural. And then I would probably check the meaning of the words perks and assignment that he uses. I don't know what a perk is and what an assignment is, so I would either, following Ethan's suggestion, I would uh, take notes to check it later, or I would check it then as I was watching it. So a perk is a benefit of a job. So maybe let's say a perk that you get with your job is you get, uh, they include a gym membership. So a perk of your job is you get a, a gym membership. It's not something that jobs typically include, but your job does do that to attract talent, right? And assignment, it's kind of a funny word actually here. And this is one of the things that might happen if you look it up. So maybe your English teacher gave you a homework assignment. Right, so that a uh, homework assignment, something that you have to do at home, right? But assignment, you might hear it to the context that it makes me think of. For example, is an assignment that a CIA agent gets, or you know, James Bond gets assignments. These type of people who do investigatory work get assignments. But people who are working coffee shops, we wouldn't really call an assignment. So my feeling here is that he's trying to, he's being playful, right? He's kind of flirting with her by being playful with the the language. This is my, I've never actually watched this series. I get, I know the Adams family, so I know that this character is very, and you can tell by the way she talks, she's very off-putting, right? Or very serious always. Um, but I can imagine just by seeing these short clips that these two have some, some tension for sure. Exactly. Yeah. But you know, all that you get by watching it. So that's why it's important to be observant of these things, the emotions going on there. Who are the people in that scene? Yeah, because you, you you pick up many things, even if you have never seen the, the, the movie or the series before. And finally, one thing that he says is, uh, I think they were talking about Tyler, another boy. I guess he was actually the first boy from the first clip we saw. And uh, he says, I told you he was bad news. So for me, that was like, okay, you are calling a person bad news. I know the meaning of the word bad. I know the meaning of the word news, but... He was bad news. You see, intuitively for me, that sounds like an expression already. 
because I know the individual words, but still that doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't click. So nowadays it's really simple to do that. You can just go to Google and you can actually, uh, I've already tested it. You can type in exactly the phrase you saw in the movie. So in the clip here, uh, we heard he was bad news. If you go to Google right now and go, he was bad news, meaning the first point there is going to be the, the definition of someone being bad news. What does it mean? Or again, like if you want to do chat GPT, because there you could ask it, you'll get the definition that you could say, okay, give me five other uh, example sentences of this or five other contexts where I could use this or so on. And by the way, Ethan, what does that mean when someone is bad news? Oh yeah. So if someone is bad news, it's someone that you should look out for because they're a troublemaker. They, yeah, I think that I imagine based on this, that, uh, well, maybe the, the guy here is just making it up. The guy with the long hair is just making it up to, because he's interested in her and he doesn't want her to be interested in another guy, but it could be that this other person does bad things. Maybe they're, they're into drugs or they, I don't know, they do different things they're not supposed to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. But you see, I mean, uh, and the cool thing, Ethan, that I find about this method is uh, I think we only worked with under 30 seconds of clip here today. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even 30 seconds, but you, you see how so much, much you can learn in just 30 seconds of clip. So mm -hmm. it's amazing. And now we have a shout out for a very special listener and app user. All right, the shout out today goes to Nilu. And Nilu says, it's really an amazing app for those who are looking to improve their English. I was so afraid while speaking English, but when I started to speak with others, I completely forgot about my fear and freely spoke with other learners. I noticed one thing, other people on the app also speak very politely and they also want to improve their English without any shyness. Thanks, Real Life. Based on my experience, I recommend this app. Uh, yeah, thanks so much, Nilo. And it's great to hear that you're meeting some nice people, getting to practice your English. And you, dear listener, if you want us to shout you out, then go give the app a try if you haven't already. And if you enjoy the experience, leave us a five-star review in your favorite app store. That way we can find you and also give you our thanks here. All right. So today we have an amazing big challenge. Why don't you let it, uh, let it rip, Thiago? <laughs> Okay, so the big challenge we have for you guys today is apply this method that we just presented to you, follow these tips we shared, and then share your experience and something you've learned from a movie or a TV series clip. Also, we want to ask, do you have any other tips? Maybe, do you do anything else to help you improve your English with movies and series? Share your tips also here in the comment section below, or you can send us an email at hello at reallifeglobal.com. And for sure, check out the comments below what other tips that other learners left because you might find some juicy recommendation that we failed to mention in today's podcast. All right. And before we wrap up, we wanted to also make sure to share some comments that we had from one of our recent episodes. All right. So in one of our recent episodes, we asked you guys the question, what country would you like to move to one day and why? So here are some answers. Raul says, I would like to travel to New Zealand. I want to improve my English. Sentinella says, I want to move to Japan because I like its culture and its big cities. Uh, Heinz says that he would like to live in the US for some time because they also like their culture. And then we have Cloudy X Heaven who says, my dream is to go to South Korea for my studies. And finally, Danny says, hi guys, thanks for this conversation. I love it. I'm from Venezuela. I lived in Madrid. Spain for seven years, and now I'm living in Melbourne, Australia. I'm working and improving my English and learning about this culture, and it's an amazing experience. Thank you so much for all your comments, guys. That's amazing. So as always, thanks so much for joining us here on the Real Life English Podcast, and we look forward to seeing you, hearing from you next week. One, two, three. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Today, we're talking all about the word bitch, so get used to listening to that word because we're going to be saying a lot throughout today's lesson. Uh, again, it's not a word that we condone using a lot. There's obviously like a lot of um, political implications. It's not a word that's so nice uh, in the in the way that it's been used in the past to refer to, especially to women, for example. However, it's been evolving and stuff with the language. There's many ways to use it that don't actually refer to women and so on. And we'll be exploring some of those different uses of the word today. 